You are entering another dimension, a dimension not only of sight and sound, but of the mind. The warped, twisted mind of an individual who likes to draw silly cartoons. You are now entering the drawing zone. Doodaloo! Boom, boom! <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, welcome back, guys and gals. Um, it's time. It's that time again. Time to do some stuff. Yeah, that was really specific. Do some stuff. Anyway, um, <clears throat> as you'll notice, I went ahead and took care of the control stick thing. The colors there. That's all I had to do last time on the colors. So the colors are done, or the flat colors anyway, are done. I figured, you know, it wasn't worth it to tack that on because you didn't need to see that. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to contaminate my, I didn't want to contaminate my shading video with more coloring. Weird. I don't know. Anyway. So now it's time to start doing some other stuff. It's time to start shading. So in order to do this, for starters, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn the Baron off, and I'm going to turn Professor, oh, there he is. I'm going to turn the Professor off. That way, there's no overlapping and I can get to what I, I there's no overlapping I can get to what I need to work with, or on on with both uh, faster and easier. So we're going to do this and then these two little tricks about this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the color layer right over here and I'm going to take it and I'm going to duplicate it and I shall call it Cal Shades and then boom do that <clears throat> put it on top and then set it to multiply. Do I want it? Or was it dark and I want to get in which that didn't do much at all. Uh, dodge? No. Burn? No. I think it was just multiply. Fair enough. Yeah. So I've got this. Super dark, right? And what we're going to do here is we're going to put a mask on it. And using the mask tools, we are going to remove some of the dark parts in order to give some shade in here. Uh, probably want to take this down to maybe oh fifty percent opacity, something like that. Yeah, fifty percent transparency. 50% opacity is 50% transparency, because it's 50-50. Um, yeah, I'm going to take this and start doing this. Now, what I used to do way back in the day, and by way back in the day, I mean like maybe a year ago. <laughs> um, by way back in the day, I mean up until about a year ago, uh, is what I would do is I would go in and I would actually do the shading part. I'm going to Make this a little bit darker, actually. Um, by hand along the outside edges, and then I discovered this trick, where you basically make a copy of your color layer, and then you erase the lighter parts, which is actually a lot easier than trying to do the uh, stuff along the edges. And uh, well, it just makes life simpler. It's a, it's, a nice, it's a fun little trick. I've I've discovered many, uh, oof, what's the word? Shortcuts, I suppose you could say. Little shortcuts and tricks and things to make life easier and more importantly faster. Because when I'm trying to produce things on any kind of time frame, which is usually most of the time, you know, if there's a faster, more efficient way to do it, that's the way I typically want to go with. Because I love drawing, and I, I love spending hours and hours and hours on these things. I really do. But I don't always have hours and hours and hours to spend on these things, because, you know, 
I do have a life to live and stuff like that. I have people that I care about that I like to <clears throat> spend time with, and speak to, and I've got other activities that I do recreationally and hobbies and things. I don't count drawing as a hobby because that's just my job. <laughs> but it's also kind of a hobby too in, in some ways because I guess you could say any time that I just draw for fun and not for something that it's a hobby. But I don't, know. I don't feel like it qualifies as a hobby. Not anymore. Maybe at one point in time it did, but that was some time ago. And I ain't there no more. I've moved past that. So, again, like I said, not not that I don't enjoy it tremendously because I do, but uh, I would I still wouldn't call it a hobby. Uh, some hobbies ooh, this might be interesting to some of you people out there. Some hobbies that I do like to spend a little bit of free time on whenever I can get it, which seems. You know, seems rarer and rarer these days. Um, I enjoy a good video game. Uh, video games are fun. I like them. Uh, types of video games that I like are not really the type of video games that are the popular ones these days. Like your Calls of Duty and Halos and things. Not, not my, not my cup of tea at all. <clears throat> In fact, I'm terrible with those type of games because I'm really bad at aiming in them. And, I don't know, for some reason, just first person in general does not play nice with me because of the fact that, uh, I don't know, the, the, the viewpoint seems so limited when you're in a first person mode because, you know, you're limited by the screen. And when you actually see things in your field of vision, your field of vision is much wider than the television screen, even though the television screens have gotten wider and almost all the television screens are these, <clears throat> uh, well, they're wider screen, they're widescreen formatted, uh, but even so, you know, your actual field of vision is wider still even than that, um, and so the, the first person things seem narrowed enough that's like, I can't see something it's right beside me, but because it's off, it's like literally right beside me because it's off screen. Where in reality, if there was something that was literally right beside you, you could see it. Now you might not be able to, like, because it would be in your periphery, your peripheral vision. And of course, now you might not be able to see it very well. You're not going to see, like, super high detail or anything in your periphery, but you could see it enough to know that there was something there. You're not going to get blind sighted from the side like that like you might in those games. And so like, that always throws me off, for one. For two, they usually involve shooting of some kind, and I can't aim for crud. And that goes for reality, too. I have tried target shooting before, and I'm awful at it. Which is really weird to me, actually, because, I mean, obviously, as, as an artistic individual, I, I have got really good depth perception, and I've got really good... Um, Spatial reasoning, but I could, but when it comes to actually flinging some sort of projectile to a position that I want it to go, it, I can't. I just it's not. I'm not wired that way. I suppose I have I have trouble with that. So the first person shooty things just not my cup of tea at all. Which is a shame because those are the popular like multiplayer you know things that everyone wants to get together and play. Nobody wants to get together and have a Sonic Adventure 2 party, which I would love. Actually, I actually did my own once, and some of my friends were nice enough to actually show up to it, but I'm, I'm not so sure that they really cared to be there. They were just being nice because they're my friends. But hey, at least I've got friends that are willing to suffer for me, right? <laughs> uh, that sounds worse than it did in my head. Anyway, um, but yeah. I prefer, obviously I prefer more cartoony things, surprise, surprise, this should not astound anybody that's sitting here watching me draw a cartoon kangaroo, or, well, work on a cartoon kangaroo, the drawing part's already done, but you know what I mean. Um, so, things like that I enjoy, so Mario, I like Mario, I like Sonic, 
Ty, the Tasmanian Tiger, is lots of fun because I also obviously like outbacky stuff, and that one's that one's great fun. If you can never find that one, the, it's it's one of the funniest video games I've ever played, for sure, for sure. I mean, it's it is hilarious. Worth your time, every time. I may have mentioned this before, I think, in that podcast thing that I did once. But, yeah. Um, what was I saying? Oh, right. So, I like, like Ty. Spyro's fun. I like Spyro. I know they came out recently with that, uh, that Reignited trilogy thing that looks really pretty. Like, I think they did a really good job of capturing the exact same feel but with much better graphics. Like, I can imagine that that's what it would have looked like had they been able to do it. You know, it's not a, it's not a complete redesign like it might so easily have been, especially these days when redesign and reboots and things are so very prevalent. Uh, but no, instead, they what they did, I really feel like captures the original artwork and the original designs and everything and, and just makes them prettier, makes them more, you know, it's what they would have done back then had they had the hardware that they do now. And from my, what I understand, haven't played it yet, want to be able to, uh, from what I understand, it's like the game itself is pretty faithful. The original, they didn't go changing a bunch of things. I think they may have added a few things. I'm, I'm, all, I'm all for adding things. Just don't change what's there. But if you can add to it and make it better, that's that's fantastic. And I think my ge my general feeling on that is that that's what they did. So you know, good on them for that. Uh, would love to play that one. I do not have any kind of PlayStation consoles to play it on. Though. Is it on Xbox too? I don't I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what consoles it's available for yet. I know that there's talk of it becoming available for the Switch. It's not. I know it's not available for the Switch yet because the Switch is the one that I'm looking into getting uh, because I have a number of games on there that I would like to play. Uh, but I'm still saving up for that puppy. Seems like every time I've gotten enough to buy it like three times now, but it seems like every time I manage to save up enough money to buy it, something else comes up that I need to spend that money on rather than what I want. So, I guess that's called being an adult and having responsibilities, I suppose. But anyway, um, so I haven't been able to actually get one yet. It's on my list of things that I want to do, but <clears throat> I ain't there. I have Sonic Forces sitting on my shelf still, collecting dust. I actually bought that thing at release, because thematically I liked where it was going. Um, from what I've been able to glean since then, it didn't really deliver on what it was promising, which, huh, huge surprise there. Sonic game that doesn't deliver on what it's promising in the past decade or more. It's not, it's not that surprising. But that's a whole other ball of wax. Um, Lego games I like. I enjoy those. All of those are really good. I think Lego games are interesting in that I feel like they do a, a better job capturing the actual like spirit of whatever it is that they happen to be doing because they're usually licensed properties. They haven't done their own stuff since like Lego Island, I think. It's been a while. Uh, they had some really cool stuff of their own that they used to do. In fact, I remember Johnny Thunder was a favorite of mine, which is kind of an Indiana Jones kind of thing. And that's actually where Calamity's hat here comes from. Is the you know the whole Australian hat with the it's folded up like this. Because I had the old Johnny Thunder Lego minifigure and he had this kind of hat and I'm like, that's a really cool hat and you know, I found out that it was Australian and so later on, when it came time to make my own Australian character that was kind of like a little bit Bugs Bunny and a little bit Indiana Jones mixed together, it just made sense. It was just natural to stick that hat on him. And uh, 
So it's funny where we get some of our inspirations. I think uh, I think that uh, that one actually influenced me quite a bit because so you've got the Baron here who has the old timey flight get up, which there was a character in the Johnny Thunder Adventures Lego sets that had that. Um, Professor Professor's different. <clears throat> He's more of your like mad scientist type trope, so that's he's a, he's a different creature altogether. But um, but it, you know it's interesting how those things influence, and that also influenced my interest in. I have a kind of a interest in like ancient cultures and ancient. Um, Civilizations and things like that, and ruins and stuff like that. I mean, those things, those things are fascinating to me. I remember I had a book when I was younger that was. Why is this not? Hang on. That doesn't seem like it is even. Did I accidentally move my layer? No, no, I didn't. Huh? Weird. Anyway, um. <clears throat> But where was I? Oh yeah, I had a book that had it was like Seven Wonders of the Ancient World or whatnot. But it was really interesting, and it talked about all of these ancient sites and things. And there was, there was, um, let's see, there was Angkor Wat, and uh, like obviously you had the pyramids, and you had. Uh, the Sphin you know, pyramids and Sphinx and stuff like that. It talked about the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, which of course are not there anymore, but they was like a there was an artist representation of what it might have looked like based on, you know, descriptions and things from the day. I think they I feel like that would have been a really cool thing to see back in in the time. Um But you know, it had stuff like that uh, the, um, what, what are they, in China, the, uh, Terracotta Warriors, yes, those things, and, and the Great Wall, uh, and then, like I said, Angkor Wat, which is in Cambodia, I want to say, it's one of the few eastern, <clears throat> far eastern things that I would, would like to see, um, <clears throat> I know I'm kind of a weirdo, by today's standards, you know, and not always the one, but uh, <clears throat> in that I'm not really that fascinated with Asian culture, like a lot of people seem to be, you know, like anime is really big, and there's a lot of other things, I, you know, it makes sense, because Japan specifically, and China, I guess, to a lesser extent, but China's still pretty, you know, it's still, it's still pretty closed off, it's, it's obviously not as closed off as it used to be at one point in time, but, uh, you know, it's not exactly the most open country either because of the whole communism thing. Um, but Japan, on the other hand, like, ever, ever since World War II ended and all of that got resolved, the United States and Japan have been very, <clears throat> very close. There's been a lot of cultural exchange that's occurred since then, and especially, you know, I was talking about video games earlier, especially in things like video games and technology and stuff like that. <clears throat> Pardon me. And so, you know, it makes sense that there's been some uh, sharing there. But I don't know why, but Eastern cultures just don't really resonate with me. So, as far as, as Asia is concerned, the only places that I'd really want to visit are the Great Wall of China. Like, I would like to see that because, I mean, come on, that's, you can see it from space. That's quite the feat. That, I mean, that would be worth seeing. And then also, I would like to see Angkor Wat because that would be really cool. Maybe the Terracotta Warriors. I figure if I'm in China to see the uh, 
grand, great, the, the, the great wall, the great tower, the great wall, you know, I'm, I might as well go ahead and check out. What did you do that for? If the screen just went black for you, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. Anyway, um, <clears throat> but, uh, what was I saying? Anchor Watch. But, yeah, I figured if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna make the trick down to China to see the Great Wall, I may as well check out the, the Terracotta Wall, which too. Um, but, yeah, generally not super into that. Uh, there are a lot of things I'd like to check out in Europe. All kinds of old castles and things that I like. I'm also a great big fan of, like, medieval fantasy stuff. So, checking out castles would be great. I'd love to see, um, what's it called? Stonehenge. Yeah, I'd love to see Stonehenge. You know, all of these are, are places that I'd like to go and see. Uh, I'd love to go down to South America and see all, see like the Mayan and Aztec ruins and stuff down there. The, the temples and Tenochtitlan and, uh, Machu Picchu. Is it raining out there? Only? Yeah, it's blowing at least. We might be getting a storm. Sorry. Um. But you know, ain't but uh, Machu Picchu and like some of the Aztec places. You know, those those ruins, the um, Mesoamerican ruins, would be cool to see. I'd like to go check those out. Um. I'd like to see Petrus at some point. Uh, in uh, Jordan, I think is where that is. It's in the Middle East. Uh, and of course, I'd like to see the things like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Though, really, if we're t if we're being honest here, when it comes to uh, um, you do hang on a second. Un momento, I should be right back. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Somebody had turned on the heater and I was cooking. Anyway, um, I don't know if people are turning on the heater when it's 70 degrees outside. Thunder! It is, it is storming. Boy, did I pick a good time for this. <laughs> uh, but no, uh, all of those things I'd like to go see at some point. I don't know how I got on that. I don't know what I was... Oh, I was talking about how... Legos? How did I get to that from Legos? I don't know. I guess I'll have to listen back through this and figure out what the heck I was talking about. But anyhow, those are all things that are interesting to me, but like the Far East is not one of them. Alright folks, sorry about that. Um <clears throat> I had to cut it there for a second. Well, for more than a second. I had to cut it because that uh that's that thunderstorm that was going on decided to get really loud and interfery. <coughs> interfery, is that a word? I don't know. But uh whatever it is, it interfered. And it was not working out well, so I just stopped. And so this is me sitting down to do round two at this. I didn't remember what we were talking about. I went back and listened to the thing. I was talking about places that I'd like to visit. And <clears throat> I do remember that I was wanting to say this. I was wanting to say that I'm not saying with all that that, you know, Eastern culture is terrible, or I'm, like, I'm not bad mouthing it or anything. And if if that's your your kind of thing, great. I I have more than one good close friend that are like really big into that, and uh, 
and that's great. Um, I just it doesn't it just doesn't appeal to me, and that's that's just me. But I'm not I'm not saying <laughs> I'm not trying to say anything ill about that. <coughs> Pardon me. You know you'd think this stupid cough would be gone by now, but no. Of course, for you, this is like, what, video number five, so it's not that weird for you, but it's been a couple of weeks. I don't know. I'm getting to think maybe <clears throat> there's some allergy stuff that's kicking in. Allergies don't normally make me cough, though. They make me, give me a runny nose and make me sneeze, if anything, so. I don't know. I'm not even allergic to anything in particular, I just have generic allergies if that's even a thing basically when when the pollen counts really high or when there's a lot of dust or dirt or anything in the air it doesn't really matter what it is when there's just a lot of stuff in the air that'll that'll set me off which i think that does for everybody like that's just normal um but i don't have like any specific thing like oh the the sunflowers are pollinating and it's eating me up or whatever. I don't know if people are allergic to sunflowers or not. Probably. People, there's people that are allergic to everything. So <laughs> There's people who are allergic to water. I don't know how those people live. Considering people are 90% water. No. Anyway. <laughs> enough, enough of that. My point is that... Um... Did I even have a point? I don't know. <laughs> uh, but my point is, it's stupid. <coughs> that. <coughs> this. This is the point. <clears throat> the dadgum cough. It's like, oh, I'm going to wait till you finally get this thing fixed up, and then this is going to happen. Thank, thank you, buddy. Thank you for being so very, very considerate. Like, fantastic. Yeah, anyway. So yeah, I'm still on this. On the, of course I, I say still. This happens immediately after the other one for you. What am I talking about? For me, it, for me, I'm still on this. <laughs> well, you know, I, I guess either way, it's true that I am indeed still on this. But you, you know, whatever. I'm just about done, I think, with the dark part. Of the shading, the dark part, the dark side of the shading. Coming to the dark side, we have cookies and occasionally fruit baskets. You know, if you're watching your way or something, because you know it happens. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Anyway, <laughs> that was. But no, that was too big. You know, I can adjust things as they go. But that gives me a little bit to go on. And then I'm going to do... Basically what I'm going to do is the same thing that I did there. I'm going to copy my colors. Duplicate layer. I'm going to sketch it up here. And this time, rather than multiple... Okay. One thing that I did go to with this other layer here, the shading layer, is uh, I still have it on... I still have it on, uh, <coughs> pardon, a multiply here, but I forgot what you, what you want to do, what you, what you want to do, what, I uh, know, I forgot the way you want to do is you want to go in and you want to adjust the brightness and contrast, and you want to knock the brightness down to about negative 50, you want to knock it down to about half of what it was. I cancel because I've already done it once. I don't need to do it again <coughs> to make the whole thing a little bit darker to begin with, and then you put it on multiply. Um, so yeah, that's an important little detail that I accidentally left out on how this is supposed to work. Um, anyway, you do the same thing with this, except in reverse. So you go to a levels, and no, no, not levels. Uh, you go to adjust brightness and contrast, and you want to is up to about 50 percent and you're like wow that's super bright man like that's not that's excessive but, but no no it's fine you hit okay 
Um, and then we're gonna do. I think it did I use screen. I don't know if that's overlay. No. Soft light. Hard. I think it's hard light. I use no. Soft light. Hmm. Is it soft light that I use? That seems to be working. Or was it just lighten? <coughs> I think it was just lighten. Yeah. I forgot how I did this. <laughs> so sad. Uh, file, save, we'll close it actually, and we're gonna go, let's see, ch -ch -ch -ch, my peak theater, and we're gonna go to the comics, and I'm gonna go to Minecraft, can I, and if you've watched the first episode of this little series, then you'll know that where is the cover? Title page, title page, back to cover, Minecraft cover. Whoops, what did I do? Oh, nothing. Okay, good. You know, I think it's the third version would be the most advanced one. Let's see if it'll open. Uh huh, uh huh. It doesn't want to open. Oh, wait, there it goes. Uh, let's see here. I want to go see, make sure what I did. Highlight is on overlay okay at least for her here it was on overlay all right overlay it is mm -hmm. back to stranded cover there we go now let's <clears throat> lighten a little on overlay i don't know it seems a little Mm, I don't know. With his colors, I don't think that's gonna work well. Especially look at the, look at the um, his what you mean, that thing, his bandana. It's not any different at all. Uh, so lighten, I think, is better. Yeah, we're gonna stick with lighten for this, for my purposes. <laughs> sometimes you do one thing, sometimes you do another. That's just that's how it goes. We are gonna put another mask on this one, but this time, rather than erasing the light areas and leaving the dark areas like we did with the shading. We're going to do the opposite. We're going to fill the whole thing up so that none of it is visible. And then we're going to go in with our handy dandy little uh, the, 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 the airbrush. Where is my airbrush? Where is my airbrush? Where, 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 where is my airbrush? There we go. Ah, ah see, look, this is it. This is it. This is the ticket. That's the ticket, Mike. So, you get a nice little backlight here. See, look at that. Look at that. That's nice. Gives it, gives it a little more depth to it. Tell you what. Early, early me got shading down pretty well. But the, the, the backlighting like this, it took me a long time to... Uh, the, amp, the backlighting or ambient lighting, whatever you want to call it. it, took me a long time to learn how to do and do properly to get it that little extra. Little, it gives it that just little extra something that makes it feel just that little bit more three dimensional and, and real. Da, 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 da. Okay, let's uh, let's do this. There we go. And, whoops, nope, didn't want that dot. Okay. And then we can go in here and we can erase this in. Because we don't really need it on the other side of that line. And then let's see here. We've got some back. I'm not speaking English. Okay, I've got that. We've got this. This. Metaphysical medical problem. Eh. Mm, that's good. Um, let's put maybe a little bit of this in. You see that lightens it up a little bit, but it's not it's not a full highlight because I don't have the white part yet. Um, I'm gonna have to come back in and actually do white touches on this. But <clears throat> yeah, I can do that later. That's no big deal. Um, oh yeah. yeah, okay. That's good. That's good. That's working for me. Um, let's go ahead and let's get it a little bit bigger here. Fun fact, if you use the bracket keys back and forth, that makes your 
that that toggles through your um, brushes and makes it makes it smaller or larger depending on the order. Like I've got this weird little orphan small one, which should be in between these two, but this is custom because these are all the well you can't see. Let me point. Uh, I've got this little orphan one here. Let me get the quick to brush off. I got this little orphan one right here. Well, listen to the kids playing. <laughs> That's always so nice to listen to the kids playing. It's a happy sound. Um, but this one belongs between these two. But these were presets, and it starts my customs like right. Well, it actually starts it right here. I think sixty-five is there, and then hundred. Actually, no, it starts my customs here, and then hundred, two hundred, and then. I have bigger ones. Oh, I can't click with that. There. Derp! I gotta use my other cursor. There we go. Uh, but I got all the way up to 400. But anyway, <clears throat> this one is orphaned and not between these two where it's supposed to be because it was a custom and those were presets. And I can't... I can't drag it. I don't think... Have I even ever tried? No, you can't move it. Which is a bummer. At least you could. Customs reset, load, replace, no, don't want to do any of those things. So, yeah. But you can use. But you can use the. What happened to me? But anyway, you can use the. Uh, use that to toggle, which is mostly larger, except for that one little one that's kind of a fluke. But anyway. Little trick that I learned. Okay. Holly Holly Oxen Free! Okay. Um, nope. I just kind of very lightly make this part a bit lighter. <laughs> wow. I live in an apartment complex, in case you were unaware. And this, this is what happens when you live in an apartment complex. You have neighbors, and neighbors make noise and make sounds and stuff. It's okay. It's a it's a, a Monday afternoon after school when the uh, when when the kids typically would get together and play. I remember running around after school with Daniel Franklin was my best friend in elementary school for like three years until he moved away. No idea whatever became of him. Hey Daniel, if you're out there, drop me a line. I, I vastly doubt that you're listening to this, but who knows. If you know, buddy, if you know anybody named Daniel Franklin, Ask him if he grew up with a kid named Chris Vanderford. Ask him if that name sounds familiar to him. And if he says yes, I send him to my page. I've got all my links on the... I don't know if they're going to be on this actual video, but they're going to be... But I know they're on my YouTube channel page. Like, my links for, for my Facebook page and stuff. Like, not my personal one, but the Outback one. But it doesn't matter. Like if if he can get a hold of me, I'd love to <laughs> I'd love to catch up with him. No, don't know whatever became of him. He moved away to Arkansas, I want to say. Yeah, that was a sad day. But anyway, <laughs> but yeah, we would uh, <coughs> spend all afternoon out running around and in the neighborhood where I would go over to his house and we'd hang out. I never really came over to my house that often. I mean, on occasion, I suppose it did. Like, we played in our front yard and things, but he didn't really, like, come into our house that often. We were not very... Or my parents were not... I say were not, they still not. Very, um... I don't want to say they're not hospitable, because that makes it sound bad. But they're very private, I guess you could say. Not the type to invite people over to the house for a lot of things. In fact, the only times I can think of that we even had family over was when they just decided to show up unannounced on occasion. 
which m most of my family is good about and doesn't do that, but uh, there, there are some in my family. I'm not going to name any names in case they happen to be watching. But they probably know who they are anyway, but there are some in our family that um, don't always call ahead or say like, hey, how's it going? Are you busy? Whatever. No, they just show up. Kind of blue. But I remember as a kid, I always liked that because it was exciting. Because oh, people like that was that was fun time as a kid. I think it exasperated my parents. <laughs> uh, but hey, you know, there's a lot of things I think we we all enjoyed as a kid that exasperated our parents. So you know, why should why should I why should my story be any different? Right? <laughs> yeah. But anyway. So, do this. Ah, there we go. Get it a little bit more of a curve to it. <coughs> Pardon me, moi. Hack, hack, cough, wheeze. <laughs> but yeah, we would spend you know, all evening until it was dinner time when we got called in. Out, just running around and doing. I'd go over to his house and we'd hang out and do things. So. I remember, I remember those days. I remember when he got the news that he, that they were going to move away. Because obviously, like, that was his parents' decision, not his. Uh, he was not happy about it, nor was I. Um, but he did not handle it well. And I remember, like, I'm, I'm the type of person that's like, okay, our time is short... Our days are numbered, whatever, so, like, let's make the most of the time we have, right? Like, that's my attitude. But his was the exact opposite. He kind of, like, pushed me away and didn't want to deal with me, and I saw him less and less. And I, as, as a, you know, third grade kid, did not understand this. And I was kind of hurt by it, and I didn't know, like, why is this, why is he pushing me away? Why won't he, you know, spend time with me? We don't have that much time left, blah, 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 blah. I didn't get it when I was a kid. And I remember my parents had to sit down with me and say, okay, like, people people deal with things in different ways. And, like, Daniel's way of dealing with that was to kind of, like, distance himself from me to try, and, I guess, to try and make it hurt less when he had to actually leave. Not to say that that was, like, a, not to say that that was a conscious thing that he did, but it's more like a subconscious defense mechanism thing. These, of course, are not words that my parents used to describe that to me because, again, I was in elementary school, but <laughs> um, that was the gist of it, was that, you know, hey, this is, this is how he's coping with it because he doesn't you know, he's trying to distance himself now so it doesn't hurt so bad later when he actually has to go. Um, you know, and I understood, but it still hurt me because, like I said, I wanted to make the most of what time we had, and he just kind of pushed me away because he didn't want to have to deal with it or think about it or whatever. Um, it's kind of a sad situation. Right up until, right up until the day that he had to leave, I still remember sitting there watching that uh, van, the sedan. Or I think it was a sedan, it was a minivan. It was a minivan. Um, <clears throat> sitting there watching the minivan drive away, tear through the through the blurry tears in my eyes. Wow, this got really like depressing all of a sudden, didn't it? <laughs> Uh, but it's, 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 that's life. You can take the good with the bad, but, um, anyway. Tell you one thing, it didn't make, it didn't make it hurt any less for him to push me away. So I guess that's my, my point to the story, my lesson, as it were, to pass on, is if you're going to have to leave somebody behind, like, 
distancing yourself from them, even if you're that's what you're inclined to do, is not the best option. Because in the end, you're not going to make it hurt any less when they do leave, or when you do leave, whichever one of you is leaving. Um, it's not going to make it hurt any less when they go. And all you'll be left with is regret afterwards, like, you know, gee, I wish I had spent more time with them before I had to go, gee, I wish we had done, you know, more with, you know, the time we'd had left, blah, 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 things like that. And, and you don't want that. So that's my, that's my deep philosophical lesson for the day. That's right, folks, apparently deep, deep philosophy is going to become a recurring theme on this cartoon drawing thing. <laughs> Because why not? Um, but th that's my lesson to all of you kids out there. <laughs> and you not so... And you not so young kids out there, too. That one goes for... This one goes for everybody. Don't, don't push people away. Even if it hurts, because it'll hurt all the more if you... Even if it hurts to... To, to, <clears throat> to spend that time with them knowing that it's going to end. It's better to do that than have regrets afterwards. So. That, that's your life lesson for the day. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wonder what he's up to these days. I'd look him up, but... Daniel Franklin is a very... Daniel is a very common first name, and Franklin is a very common last name. So I'm sure if I looked him up, I would get a hundred dozen different Daniel Franklins. That would not help me any at all. So <laughs> even, even in today's day and age of the, the Facebooks and all that, it, uh, no. <laughs> nope, nope, that's still not going to help me out very much at all. And where are we? Uh, swap back to this. Yeah, that's what I want. Get a little bit bigger. You see how just adding this, adding just a little bit of this, this highlight just really makes it pop. Because beforehand, like, it was shaded, which is, it wasn't bad. Like, it had it had shading to it, but, but doing this just really kind of brings it to life. I love it. I'm so glad I discovered this technique of shading. Instead of doing doing it the hard way like I used to do. I watched some video about shading. And it was like, hey, check out this trick. And I'm like, oh, boom, my mind exploded. It was the same video that showed the, the coloring trick that I used earlier. I was like, wait, that's what the pen tool's for? Wait. Oh my gosh. <laughs> And it keeps, it prevents bleed over what? And then, uh, and then you pulled this for the shading, and, you know, just copied the color and did this, I'm like, ugh. Where have you been all my life? What is this? What, what, what sorcery is this? <laughs> what? It was it was a life changing experience. It really was <laughs> for me, anyway. <laughs> Most people it probably wouldn't be a life changing experience, but when this is what you do, and you find a way to do it better and faster at the same time, oh boy, that's that's a red letter day. Because <laughs> you can find ways to do things better, and you can find ways to do things fast. But very rarely are those two things one in the same so when you <laughs> when you manage that it's that's that's noteworthy it's like what no all right let's see here da, 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 da. <laughs> i don't know i always call this back I don't know if it actually is what is backlighting. Like, I don't know if that's what you call this, but that's what I call this. 
Words don't matter. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> let me take that back. Words do matter. Don't, don't, don't go saying mean things, kids, because I said words don't matter, because words do matter. But, uh, <clears throat> knowing what, I should say, knowing what something is called is not as important as knowing what it is and how to do it. Like, you know, being, <coughs> being largely self-taught, I'm not necessarily familiar with all the fancy lingo, but, um, I don't gotta be. I just gotta be able to know how to do the thing, right? And I suppose lingo would be helpful in, you know, working with other people and commun you know, being able to communicate properly to get things done. Uh, but, you know, I can learn that. I can learn words. I can pull out the dictionary and learn a new word any time. So, you know, <laughs> I can learn the lingo on something, even if I don't know it. Important thing is knowing what you're actually doing. Uh, okay, that's good. Makes me happy. Do -do -do. This is riveting entertainment, I'm sure. Okay. Da -da 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 If you learn nothing else, <coughs> watching me do this, which is entirely possible, I hope you've at least learned just how much of art is trial and error. I, you know, I throw something down. Eh, does that look right? Does it not look right? Uh, do I like it? Do I not like it? If I don't like it, do you know, I change it. It's very much a uh, it's it's very much a trial and error process. You just fiddle with it until you get something you like. The computer makes that much easier thanks to that nifty little undo command, but uh yeah. You know, that's why they make erasers too, so <laughs> even even on paper and pencil or painting or whatever the the medium may be there's still just, there's a lot of trial and error that goes into these things. You just kind of, a lot of times it's just kind of winging it. Like, you, you have this idea. Here, here, here's your glimpse into the mind of an artist. Ah, no, ah, run away, no! Yeah. <clears throat> now that we've had that glimpse, let's look at another glimpse into another aspect of the mind of an artist. Um, uh, so caught up in my dumb joke I forgot what I was going to say uh, but no uh, but here's your little glimpse into the mind of an artist you've got an idea of what you want to put on the page and hopefully <laughs> you've got some idea of how to go about that but then when it comes time to actually put it on the page it's you know Again, you've got a framework. You've got an idea of what you're doing. You know, generally speaking, okay, I need to do this, I need to do that, I want this, I want that. But uh, until the uh, rubber meets the road or the uh, graphite meets the pulp, as the case may be, um, or until the stylus meets the tablet, until you actually sit down to do it, you know, Nothing's really solid. It's still kind of um, in sort of a primordial stage of development. And it's not until you actually do it that um, you actually get results. I actually was lucky enough to teach... What was it? I was actually lucky enough to teach a uh, Girl Scout troop about art and other art-related things um, on Monday, or 
last Monday, because today's a Monday, too. <coughs> I was doing the, um, <clears throat> the earlier part of this video you watched before the cut was that Friday, um, I believe, but then, like I said, the, the, uh, the storm decided to not cooperate with recording, and so I stopped. And then I had the weekend, and I, you know, did weekend things, and so here I am, and it's Monday, and I'm I'm working away again. Um, so I've slept a few times since then, but it was last Monday uh, that I. Why well, am I doing this? It it doesn't matter to you what Monday it was, just because this is probably going up five weeks from when I actually did it. It doesn't matter. The point is, I was lucky enough to get to, um, you know do a sort of a drawing class kind of thing for the, the Girl Scouts, and that was fun, and I enjoy doing that for the kiddos. Um, but they've got this whole curriculum, and you're supposed to talk about this and that and the other, and this was not my first time talking to these these girls. I, uh, I've i done this before in years past. It's for, like, their art badge or something. Um, but anyway, there's this is an actual curriculum and all these things you're supposed to talk about and blah 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 blah, and uh, I did that for the first, the first couple of times, and it just it was boring. And then, and then I so I got to the point I was like, yeah, and and they were always, of course, they were asking me, oh, show us how to draw this, show us how to do that, and so I just decided one year, like, you know what, for, forget this, <laughs> forget this this. <clears throat> I, like, I didn't throw the curriculum out, I still tried to actually teach them things, don't get me wrong, but, you know, like, this is, standing here and talking about it is not how you learn about art. You learn about art by doing art. Like, that's just, that's how that works. Art, art's one of those things you learn so much more by doing than by talking about it. So, I'm just like, okay, let's, let's draw some stuff. The kids loved it. They had so much more fun. I had more fun. And <clears throat> that's the way I've done it ever since. You know, and I still work in the stuff that, you know, it wants them to know for their badge and everything, but I, I give them actually more than that. Because um, it's all part of it. Like, the drawing process is a process, and they're, all the aspects of it are active in the process, so if I just take them through the drawing process, I'm going to hit on everything that they want me to cover, so. We just had a real good time just sitting and drawing. I showed them how to do Mickey Mouse, and then we did, they didn't want them to do a rocket ship, and then a giraffe. And I drew, I drew that giraffe that I've drawn before that has, like, three neckties and a bow tie <laughs> because it's funny. And it still just amuses me far more than it probably should. So, it amused them, too. They enjoyed it. And they produced some pretty good um, art for their age, too. Like, they, they, they're they sponges for their age, and they can pick up a lot. But, yeah. But my point to that was that doing is the best way to learn any kind of artistic thing. All of the lectures in the world are pretty pretty useless and pointless. <coughs> hey, look at that. Now, now that I've done this, I forgot something. So what we're going to do, I forgot I forgot a number of things. I forgot to rename this. This is not cow color copy. This, is, this needs to be cow highlight. The highlights, just like I have cow shades, and I just have cow instead of calamity because that's really long and it would actually cut off the important. It's really long, and then down here it would cut off the important part with highlight, which I kind of need. <laughs> you know, if it was just calamity dot 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 calamity dot dot dot, that doesn't give me the information that I need at a glance to know what the heck these things are. So I just shorten it because that's a reasonable thing to do. Anyway, I'm going to turn this off for a moment. Oh, okay. Never mind. I was going to say I didn't think that I had shaded the torch, but I guess I have. I probably could use a little bit... Oh, no, wrong one. I probably use a little bit more shades in here, in this part. Yeah. 
All right, that's good. Bring this back up. Bam. Now, <clears throat> I look at this, and he almost looks shiny. Like, it's almost a little too much. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to crank it down a little bit. Eh, eh, eh. Just kind of, again, eyeball it. <clears throat> because so much of this is just winging it. So much of this is just trial and error. So, oh, undo. Uh, let's just make it a little smaller because I can get some wood grain in there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into the shades. I'm going to actually like make some wood grain out of this. Make it look a little more wood-like. That. And then I'm going to go to the highlight. I'm going to do the same thing in reverse. And kind of get it a little bit of a some more green. Yeah, there we go. Now, there we go. Now it looks like wood. That's good. I like that. All right. All right. That's good. Let's save it. <clears throat> I like it, so let's save it. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. That's good. That's good. That's good thinking, George. That's good thinking. That's using your noggin. Okay, let's see. Did I have... No, because that's just full on. No, no, X. Thank you. Sometimes I miss. So, if you hit the X button, it swaps between these two colors. And if you hit the Z button, it goes to the zoom tool, which is not what I wanted. And they're right next there to each other. And sometimes I hit the wrong thing, and it's bothersome. Do I? Do you have to be next to each other? You make my life miserable. That's what I want. Yeah, so... <coughs> the eyes didn't... Well, maybe they did gray out just a little bit. Yeah, they did. There's a little bit of gray there. Let's bring it out. Make the eyes look at least a little bit more three-dimensional. Most of that I'm probably going to have to do with... Um, another layer. White and black can be kind of finicky when it comes to these things. So, it's just, it's just how life is. Alright, so... Da -da 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 Save and save often. There we go. All right, I'm I'm pretty happy with this. I I don't think I have a whole lot more that need that I need to do here. Give me my no. That's not what I wanted. This is what I wanted. I can make it smaller. But no, not that. What are you doing? This is not what I want you to do. What will be all difficult on me? There we go. It's better. Get your checks together. There we go. All right, right. There we go. Now we're talking. Right. Business now. That's the ticket. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> See, we are just about done here. I think. Just touch some things up. A little bit more on here. A little bit more like that. 
One more thing I want to do. I want to go in on my shades and throw in just a little bit of texture on the hat itself. Sort of kind of, kind of put some. I want to make sure I'm in the right shade. Just put, throw in some little bits like this. Make it a little bit more, um, look maybe a little dirtier, a little bit rougher. Kind of adds a little bit to it, I think. Makes it a little bit more, um, not necessarily realistic, but I don't know. I, I, I think the, uh, the extra added texture to it just kind of brings it to life all the more. Oh, speaking of which, I need to go in here, and I need to, with the highlight, there we go, that's it, do one of these numbers, like that, let me take this and kind of smudge it a little bit. Give it a nice kind of ribbony look. There we go. That's nice. That's nice. That looks pretty. It's pretty. All right. Let's um. Let's go here. Da 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 da. But no. Mm. No, a little bit smaller. There we go. Try to get just a little bit more of a, of a highlight off of this part here. Oh, and I can't forget this, too. I need to make a uh, backlight on this as well. Like, on his nose. There we go. That's gonna, that's gonna really melt, make it pop. Do the same thing on the eyes. Yeah, 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 that's, that's it. That's the ticket. Mm-hmm. Yep. Now, you'll notice that, like, the nose, there's a little bit more 3D in, like, the nose and the eyes, but it still seems kind of flat. Um, and, <clears throat> again, the black and the white are kind of odd when it comes to these things, because, you know, using... 50% darker, 50%, obviously 50% darker than black is still just flat black. Like, that's no darker. And 50% lighter is, you know, it's it's a little lighter, but it's not actually 50-50, 50, 50, 50 black, 50 white. It's not a 50-50 gray. It's, you know, it's more of, of this. So, it, it doesn't quite go far enough to get me the contrast that I would need. Um, but that's okay because I'm going to go in and actually touch that up with some actual white shines and stuff. It probably, it's going to be probably one of the last things I do. Um, <clears throat> it's a little lower on the uh, priority, or not lower on the priority totem pole, but it's uh, later, I should say, on the priority totem pole. It's, uh, it's something that uh, we get to, and I'll probably do it to all of the characters at once. Probably still on separate layers. If I remember correctly, if I remember to do it properly, I will do it on separate layers. But anyway, but see, there you go. So we went from just to kind of give you a, a basis of comparison here. We went from this, just flat colors, to this. 
So, like, oh, kind of the 3D effect really pops. I mean, that's good. Like, that, that went from that to this. And that, that gave it a little more depth and made it feel better. But then we went and did the highlights. And then that just really made it pop. Again, I might have to adjust that down a little bit more. But I don't know. I actually like the higher contrast. And the reason why is because it tends to print a little darker than it looks on the screen. So I like to try and uh, not compromise. Uh, <coughs> oh, what's the word? Try and um, accommodate for that. So that is why it looks the way it looks. So I feel good about this. This is good. <clears throat> I think I might actually cut out. Where are you? There, I'm still on highlight. Yeah, I'm still on highlight. Okay, I actually might. Uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and darken the tail just a little bit. Yeah, like this. Um, just because it's in the background, so I want it to look a little bit darker. Yeah, that looks better. I like it. I'm good. I'm happy with it. So, we got that going for us. Now, just to make sure everything is on the same page, I'm going to take my cow ink. I'm going to add the highlight and the shadows all in. So, they're all over here and uh, connected, chained together, linked together, so that um, I know they go together. And that'll be good. <clears throat> so, this, I believe, is going to be it for this video. In the next video, we're probably going to do either the Professor or the Baron. I don't know which one we're going to do first. Um, I think probably the Baron, because the Professor has a lot more white in it, which is going to pose some of the same problems as Calamity's eyes up here. And so I probably want to tackle his eyes and the Baron's eyes and the white in the Professor all at once. And since such a huge chunk of the Professor is white, that seems to me to be the time to do it. So, we'll probably save the professor for last. We'll probably do the Baron next time. But anyway, so this is what we got. Um, yay. Let's turn the other characters back on just, just to see. So we got... Da, 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 got that. Professor Ink. Some color. So that's what we have. Yeah, compared to the other two, he looks really shiny, but that that that'll be better. And, and you know, setting the uh, setting the stage and the lighting <clears throat> will be important too, and will help cut down on the glare that is going on with Calamity. And again, like if I feel like I need to, I can always turn it down lower or higher as needed. Like because ninety, that's too high. So like right here, I think is still pretty good. Anyway. That's what we got. That's where we're at. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna do. We're gonna do the next pass here shortly. Uh, it's 7:20 p.m. for me here, which is you know, about time to go get something to eat. So I'm probably gonna go grab some food, and then I'll be back, and we'll start the next video. We'll start in on the on the Baron here. Um, not sure what we'll talk about on that one. We talked about globe trotting on this one. Um, I would ask you guys, but like I said, I'm I'm going to do this before you guys get to this, so <laughs> you can't help me here. I'm hope I'm helpless. No. Um. But I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll come up with something to talk about. Maybe. I don't know. Uh. Sound off in the comments below if you have ideas about things to talk about. Uh, just in case I happen to get to you uh, before this is over. Um, but it might be you know useful for the next time I do a thing. Um, let me know what you think about the fancy shading and the. Does he look too shiny to you? Does he not? Because this is this is still edit editable. Editable. It's editable. 
Blah. It's still editable. I haven't put it out to the, um... I haven't put it out to the printers yet. Or, well... Obviously, I haven't put it out to the printers yet, because I'm still working on it, but uh, by the time this goes up, it may not be to the printers yet, either. <coughs> so you can... Uh, you can give me the that good good feedback so that I can have some idea what the heck is going on. Uh, anyway, you guys have just an absolutely phantasmagorical day, and uh, you'll see. The we will not see you. I will not see you. I always want to say see you next time, but that's not true. <laughs> um. See, still not good at the signing off. So, goodbye. So long. Arrivederci. Afirazane. Dosvidania. <laughs> good eye, Mike. And so, after a five minute long denouement, the video finally ended. Because there are no proper sign offs in the drawing zone. Do 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 do